How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. This time slot for me is usually free, so I don't have any problems with it. Okay, perfect. So, what last time we mentioned, uh, last time we spoke, you had just finished up at the regional. You mentioned that you wanted to look at transformations. How do they work? How do we approach them? Um, SLP versus a good Falcon for review. You said that was that's been a tricky one. Um, and then I think we kind of talked about Ness independently, but if you still want to go over that, that's a okay. And yeah, like what to do with Blizzard walls when we um, when you actually get them caught in them. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So where do you want to start? Transformations. Transformations? Cool, cool, cool. I am lost. <clears throat> so what has you lost on them? Like, what specifically is it about? Is it just them, like, as a concept? Or, like, what's the... Yeah. Like, like first and foremost, when the transformation occurs, is there somewhere I want to be? Like, somewhere on the stage? Because sure. there's usually about a good five sec, like a good at least three seconds before like the, 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 the that the stage shows the logo and then it transforms to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I would say here is let me see if I can find like a map of them, and like a map. Like let me see if I can find the transformations themselves. Uh, that is a good question. So, Pokemon Stadium transformations. Um, SSVM. Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, cool. So what I would say here is, let me share my screen. Yeah. So this is the grass. This would be the grass transformation, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen this before. So yeah. What I would say here is, as the transformation comes up. Big things that to look out for are the platform here and the platform here are going to go down, and then the stage is going to come up, right? Okay. So this is going to disrupt handoffs that are going on around this section, um, and when this one comes up, this tree, this tree is this platform here is weird, um, in that it can kind of go up and it can kind of go down if you're standing on it. It kind of bounces. It sort of like bounces or descends a bit. It's um, like the one on it, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, okay. So what I would say here is the grass stage is fairly straightforward in this regard. Um, the only rules of it is that just be careful if you're in this middle section. Um, these platforms can be disruptive, but they don't really do a whole lot most of the time with like normal fighting. Just be prepared to move to either side of them and you're fine. I would mm -hmm. say generally it's okay to move to, it's better to move to the left than it is to the right, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, the just, traction, right? Um, it's not even that. It's just that, like, be prepared. I the way the reason I I prefer moving to the left is because you don't get caught on this platform. Okay. Yeah. Fire transformation. Oh boy. So, I would say that a lot of times you kind of like so ICs are kind of interesting here. So one of the so the big thing about like the this state this um transformation is that. I actually think Ices are one of the better characters at fighting on this transformation, as far as things go. Mm -hmm. um, the wall is actually your the wall is kind of your friend in a lot of ways, in that it gives if you are getting hit towards the wall, um, Nana is a lot more resistant to dying. True. Um, I would say that you want to be fighting in this area. Mm -hmm. The other thing here to remember is that like when people come over, when people want to approach into you. Your up air beats like almost everything they do. Mm -hmm. um, the only caveat there is Marth can Marth can forward smash through the tree if he's here. Like his his sword will actually go through it. Mm -hmm. um, so against him specifically, it's good to keep a little bit of space. Like you want to be here in this like pit here in the mm -hmm. middle. Um, generally speaking, for positioning, just move to the side um, as the tree comes up. The one thing you don't want to be is caught on the tree's platforms. Yeah. Like being anywhere, anywhere here is fine. If you're over here, it's also fine. Um, this is less desirable because you're basically just going to come back with less stage control. But like, it also beats getting infinited by Fox against the wall if you're in, mm. if you're in a disadvantageous position. So, you know, it's kind of a pick left or right. Obviously, right is better. But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> does that make some amount of sense? Yes. Okay. 
I actually like this stage for them because you can actually just you can just hit people away. Like if Fox tries to come around here with like up airs and with like back airs or drills on top of you to like get into this into a fighting stance. Like if Fox is over here and he tries to come over, it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to wall him out with up airs as he comes down. But yeah, it's a nuisance. The water stage, very similar rules to the um. Very similar, to, very similar rules to grass in that, like, just avoid being on the windmill when it spawns. Mm -hmm. Like, this is annoying. Being caught on this thing when it comes up is annoying. Mm -hmm. um, try to fight on either the right side or, like, over here. So you want to be here or you want to be here. Okay. Um, yeah, not really a bad stage for you. Interesting things to note, uh, your ice blocks will go faster if they slide down the slope. Right, yeah. Yeah. And then and rock. Then the rock. Rock is stupid. I hate this stage. Um, I, in terms of practical advice, I would say that if you're in here, just protect your space in here, um, and try to find, like try to like protect your space in here, and then try to transition to a spot that's more defensible. I don't like being caught in here versus Fox, but if you can get up here versus him, it tends to go better. There's not a whole lot he can actually do to you up here um, with good shield usage. And he doesn't really want to, like, attack you up here. Mm -hmm. um, doing ledge stall style stuff on this part of the map is also pretty good. There's a ledge here that you can play with. Um, mm -hmm. And it's difficult for most characters to approach. Your ice cubes are pretty good when you slide when you shoot them across no, across this type of service because they can slide down here, go here, kind of do this thing, like follow that formation. In general, though, like, if you're starting in here, you're generally trying to move either up here if this is safer, or you're trying to just hold this spot and look for, and, like, wait in here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll see ICs, like, chill in here, and they'll just shoot ice blocks to, like, hit over here. Like, that's a pretty mm -hmm. common way to, like, guard space. Um, the big thing to remember is that, like, with this platform being here, it's actually pretty difficult for most characters to, like, attack you while you're in here. So... Yeah. If you're fighting exactly not Fox, or even if you're fighting Fox in some positions, like, it can be fine to just sit in here. Um, don't try to, like, go to this side directly without cover. Um, and if you happen to, like, be on this side, be in this part of the formation, just remember that this this sloped platform is, like, like this sloped surface. It really messes up a lot of, like, attack timings um, mm -hmm. and, and spacing, so you generally want to fight over here. Okay. It's a... Yeah. I don't, that's really what I would cover in terms of stage, in, the, in terms of Pokemon Stadium. It's the transformations are goofy, but I would say that the more you can promote in action, or like not overextending in them, the better things tend to go. The last mm -hmm. thing you want to do is like try to like go from here into here. This is quite dangerous. Um, yeah, a lot of times as ICs, you're just going to be using the fact that like these walls kind of prevent people from having direct pathways or like variable approach pathways. So a lot of it's just going to be defending with up air effectively. Mm -hmm. Or using um, yeah. On the on the grass stage, the traction changes, right? I don't think so. I think it's still pretty standard. Okay. Like what what do you mean by that? Do you mean like that your wave dashes will go like slower? Like a slightly longer, it felt like. Hmm. That could just be the slope because you're going to have like more. Because there's a slope here and there's a slope here. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll go f your tech. Your character is technically closer to the ground, so mm -hmm. like if you're moving, if you're moving against them, mm -hmm. so you might be feeling the impact of that. Mm -hmm. But that's more of like an ang the slope property as opposed to like anything to do with like the um. That's not really, like, a stage property so much as it's just, like, a physics property. Gotcha. Yeah. Because this is just, just, like, boom. Yeah, in general, like, these stages are very... Because, like, bef prior to this uh, prior to this tournament, I had played on Pokemon Stadium with transformations on once at someone's house. Ah. So this was legitimately my first actual competitive exposure two transformations and I was kind of, it was it was fairly jarring because I'm used to Pokemon Stadium being the fairly safe ice climbers counter pick. Gotcha. And not having that did shake up my game plan a little bit. 
So one thing I would say about the grass stage is that like a lot of characters, because the blast zone is about here, mm -hmm. like the blast zone is is pretty like loaded, you know, is pretty like Pokemon Stadium is pretty good at vertical kills in general. It's like the blast zone's probably around like the yay high, mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit higher actually, maybe around here, but it's not very that much high off, the, like very high off the stage in general. So mm -hmm. one thing I would say that in, that happens a lot is pl opponents are going to try to carry you up using these platforms. Mm -hmm. to light because this this kind of platform where you have like a top platform height when you have like a top platform and then like there's a side platform height like this is a really unusual platform configuration because normally this should be like here in the middle but instead they've kind of got like a ladder thing going on with these two so this mm -hmm. is a very common thing for people to play towards um You'll see foxes in particular try to carry you up to the top here. So what I would say is pretty important is to DI this way in general. Like this open oh. space is like a lot safer. Um, yeah, like if you like, it's a small thing, but like you can see how that would make like a difference in terms of like susceptibility to death, right? Like if you keep going, if you're getting hit towards the platform, don't go like this. Go just keep going this way because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting popped off off the side platform of the other side platform isn't really that big of a deal, but getting carried up to this one, yeah, that can get bring you pretty close to the blast zone real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I would actually say that ICs are kind of unique, you know, are actually kind of like good at, in this regard. Um, just because one of their main like feature, one of their main like perks, is that they with their up airs, they're actually pretty good at covering this whole like platform zone with with theirs. So it's pretty easy to like get people like kind of like hit them into this zone in between the two platforms and then follow them up with full hop up airs. Um, I know I've seen people go for like belay kills and when they hit the opponent into like this territory. So mm -hmm. that's like an, that's kind of a neat option that's like available to you here, especially versus floaties that isn't normally available as part of your juggling because it's hard to get them to the top platform because normally they can just DI away. But again, you kind of have like an, a direct pathway up to this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, using the angle, like, because I don't think they're up here hit straight up. It's, like, at a bit of a slant, right? Yeah. Yeah, so using that property when you're going this way can be quite good. I would say for that reason, a lot of times, as long as you avoid this middle platform, like, as long as you're, like, kind of maneuvering in this area when the, the platforms spawn, um, this is generally good form. Mm. A, a useful trick I'd also point out is to slide the ice blocks across the platform as it's spawning. Gotcha. That can add some like variability to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it just covers your top. Like it just covers the top of you, right? Because the platform is like the platform exists not when it's like here, but like once it's about here. Mm -hmm. So then, like once it's as it's going up, like once it reaches about like this point here. Um, yeah, just sliding the ice cubes across it for defense if you're in this kind of space, or wave dashing behind it as well. Like, that can also be an easy way that you can get people to mess up their landings. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, if they get caught on the platform as just as it's coming up right about here, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, a lot of times their attack will miss. So then, like, you, by moving into this zone, right, going here to yeah. here, a lot of times you can grab them when they, like, land in that spot. Mm-hmm. So there's little tricks you can use, you can play on this level that are pretty strong. Um, but in general, if you're not sure, just try to treat it as not being as weird as it looks. Um, I know that the, like, really at the end of the day, the Pokemon Stadium transformations are not, the like, the grass and water are not that different from normal stages. Mm -hmm. um, and you can apply a lot of the same kind of logic, I guess, to how we normally fight on levels to these mm -hmm. levels. No, to the here. The only really yeah. weird part of this level is the windmill. Mm -hmm. The windmill and maybe kind of the slopes in the sense that like you can move a little bit quicker and I and project and your projectiles happen to do different things on them. But like mm -hmm. this is really just like kind of a standard triplat formation um in a lot of ways. And like this is the weird part because this is where like this is where people can fall through, but I would just say generally you just want to avoid this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Avoid except during recovery. Yeah, about... This is good for recovery, funnily enough. Yeah, I played uh, 22k, the Sheik on here, and it was not fun. Mm -hmm. What What did they do that was, like, irritating? What did they do that was, like, not fun? 
Uh, well, 22k came along with Calvar, and like he seemed far more experienced with this. And specifically when it came to this water stage, it felt like he knew how to move between that center platform and the edge of the windmill very, very well, and it was particularly a nuisance. Yeah, so this center platform and the windmill... Yeah, so, he, he, he he would somehow move between those two, like, in, in such a way that my short hop up air just could not cover reasonably. Yeah, so what do you think we do about that? Like, so when how do you think we, like, counter that? The way I tried to was um, try to catch when he would come down from the windmill to the platform with a back air on the platform. So is he waiting till he's at like here and then come going to that spot? Sort of, yeah. Okay, cool. So here's the thing about the windmill. Once the windmill is at a certain, it's like around here. It's actually right around here, actually. Actually, at a certain alignment, the opponent will fall off the windmill. Mm -hmm. I think it's like around. I think like it'll stay on it here. It's when it's like a little bit further. I think it's when it goes to like here. Okay. At around somewhere between here and here, um, they'll fall off. They'll fall. They'll fall off it. So what you want to do is, you once they once they fall off it at no somewhere in this area, they're gonna have to fall towards this this section. At that, this is the point where you kind of like short hop and knowing where like if you can figure out when they fall off, that's the point where you like short hop, prime yourself, and then double jump up air. I would mm -hmm. recommend I would recommend using your double jump for this because you know that it's just like standard sharking at some point. Um, mm -hmm. You know that there's a point at which they fall off, and I don't remember exactly where it is, but you see what you can see. You see how we're treating it. It's like yeah. if they come off aggressively, we're primed with our short hop to be able to deal with it because we can react and up air. We also have like a larger window because we're using like the fact that we're a little bit off the ground um, mm -hmm. from this section before doing it because we can jump here. And then we have a little bit of extra room to react with our up air and still get the auto cancel. Mm -hmm. So we're using the extra bump off the ground to our advantage. And then if she, and then if the opponent doesn't do that, then we can react and double jump. So yeah, yeah. I would say with the other two transformations, though, the biggest thing is just like don't try to minimize how much you fight on them, especially yeah. this one. This one is almost all just like. The biggest thing with this rock transformation is just figuring out how to like how to stall it out. Really, I would mm. say that if you've died, it's on. It's often good to just like wait out the clock the extra two seconds. Mm. Um, like don't leave the angel platform prematurely. Just let it run because you want to. You don't. This this stage is a disaster. <laughs> this stage has, yeah. like this stage causes a whole lot of things to go awry. Um. Like, there's just so many, like, weird things about it. Because, like, this this is, like, there's a pocket of space here. Like, th this being this being here it causes problems a lot of the time. Um, mm. This being, like, uneven terrain, like, ugh. I just, there's nothing, there's nothing I like about this level. Um, yeah, like, this being here, this is weird. This even has, like, a bit of a raised, like, bist, a bit of a raised, like, the feature. Like a, like this is a raised surface too, which kind it of, is. Yep, oh, going God. from here to here is raised. So, there's you, a so lot you of... push up against. Do you push up against it or? Yep. Okay. Not what, the, usually. Do you know what it, you know right. what that does to ice blocks? I think it causes them to slide against it and then come back. Okay. So, like I said, this layout is weird. Um. This here, like this, has a surface here that get that gets stuck. Like this is why I mean why I say that. Like just don't fight here if you can avoid it because the big the big thing that this has going for it is that with these walls, it's not easy for people to approach you. So I would say that generally speaking, as I see, you want to control this spot, like here. Yeah. Like situate yourself here because you can shoot the ice blocks. Oh, like you can shoot the ice blocks over here and down. And they kind of like go in this kind of formation. Um, you're also still keeping the option to like jump up here. Like you can shoot mm. them up here, and then they go they ac they go across over like that too. Um, mm. You can also up air to control this section as well, um, or harass people out of it. Like short up air is quite difficult to approach here. 
Um, mm. And if all else fails, you can also just leave this spot. Like, you can also just leave this spot if you see that this isn't going your way and head mm. to this upper area. Um, which is not, which isn't ideal, but like again, you still have the option to like shoot the ice blocks acro down across, and it just kind of like just does stuff like this, mm -hmm. or down and yeah, same thing. Uh, even if you wind up going over here, this isn't the end of the world because you can stall in this section. Um, like you can use, like you can have Nana just do her thing. You can also block on the on the lower area here. Mm -hmm. um, or like use light shields in this spot if, if people should come up and shoot lasers like there's a lot of it's difficult to approach them here and again you can still slide the ice blocks down from this position like pretty easily yeah but the big thing is is like there's a lot of if you're on this side you basically play defense if you're on mm. this side you still play defense if you're on this section you still wind up playing defense it's just it's a little bit more of an active position because yeah, you want to be like guarding this area with up airs. Like this is a big, this is the the important choke point. Um, you can still slide ice blocks over here too, and they go into this section, which is like fine. <clears throat> so the big thing I, I see is like just force passivity. Yep. Like basically, just wait it out. Pretty much, it's an like it's annoying because you have to be kind of active about it, so it feels like. You know, you're doing all this stuff and you're not really getting much out of it, which is kind of a bummer, but trust me, you'll be happy when you, you'll be happy about not, like, attacking into this zone. Yeah. Like, if you attack into a fox and something goes wrong, like, you're going to be really happy that you, you're going to be really, really unhappy. The risk is not worth the reward. No, it rarely is. Yeah. So on this one, what do we have here? So we've got this weird pit in the middle here. Then we've got the tree... It should be straight. And then aside from that, this is this tree is weird. It's kind of like this shaped, which is a whole thing. You can't pass through any of this, like except when it spawns, right? When the tree spawns. Yep, correct. So because none of because all of this is considered impassable, like this, you can pass through here. This is fine. But if you're on here, no, that won't help. They won't allow you to do that. So that's kind of weird. Like here, we can flag that is. So yellow will make passable. Like you can pass through there and there, but you can't pass through the middle. You can pass through here, and then yeah. So with this in mind, I would say the big thing here is this is another level where we tend to play another part of the like another transformation where we tend to play very passively. Um, yeah. Just because we don't want to get caught against the wall. Um, there are things... That, Ices are some of the better characters at using the wall. Um, I would say that like fighting in this general section of Pokemon Stadium is pretty good for them. Like anything around here. Um, because you can cover this upper section with, with up airs pretty effectively. The wall mm. helps you protect Nana. Um... Yeah, and this uh, like this gives you a place to go for insulation versus like full hops. So like moving from here to here tends to be pretty strong. Um, if you're over here, I would say just like if you're over here, we just play defense. Okay. Yeah. And the big thing is just be careful of these platforms as they're coming up. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's about what I'd say about transformations in general. Okay. Is there like a preferred way to like practice on them or is it just like go boot up a console without without the on just regular Nintendo? Could I would say that like if you can, well actually that's a good question. If you go into if you go into like Uncle Punch, does it do, do the stages ever transform? I believe so. I can check real quick, but I believe that's on by default. Yeah, because I would say that that's probably where I would that's probably where I would start, honestly. Like, let me just take a look at mine real quick. Wonder if there's something in the gecko codes. Because like, if I could get Uncle Punch on transformations, that would be a significant boost. Yeah, I'm just going in to see what I've got. I'm just going in to see if if it appears. Because I don't know if it does or not. Because it's supposed to be every 30 seconds or so, I think. Yeah. 
So let's see here. See anything yet? Maybe it's like longer. Give another 30 seconds. In the meantime, you were talking about Falcon. Do you have any event matches for that one for us? I I do. Perfect. And yeah, I looking online. It's it looks like it's hard coded to Frozen on Slippy. Okay, but does it do it in Uncle Punch? Like, have we seen that before? Like, because I I'm, I'm I'm it's mainly Uncle Punch that I think that like. I, th I don't think we're going to be able to practice it on Slippy, because I know that there's, like, Fizzy has talked desync. about... Yeah, desync issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're well. red from disc. Okay. While we're, wait while we're waiting for this, do you want to pass the matches through? Sure. Um, here's an example one. Perfect. Okay. Let me just see what we got. Uh, yeah, 40 seconds so far. It really doesn't look like it. Yeah. Do we have it? Like, so I think that this might be something we have to probably come up with another solution for, which is fine. Um, I don't know what that solution would be at this moment. But yeah, like, this has been a minute. I don't think it's supposed to go this long. No. Um, it's not like... the end of the wor it's not the end of the world to go on console. I just I'm not sure if it's gonna be a one to one equivalent because right now I have my Wii hooked up to my Retro Tank 4K. I've measured the latency and that should be within 1.1 milliseconds of console roughly, but I don't have the tools to really verify if that's true. Right. I think that this is more... I think that with this transform, with this stadium transformations, it's more about, like, positioning going into them and just, just mm -hmm. generally understanding where things appear. Um, yeah. I think that we're... I think, like, the more... Like, I don't think that every... This isn't necessarily the best argument, but I think that people are generally not as good on transformations as they used to be, um, which is understandable. So I think that it's probably possible to just understand broadly how they work. And just be able to like make sure we're in the right spot at the right time. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of right spot at the right time, let's talk about Falcon. So we, I see you get the, you connect this Blizzard here. Yeah. What's going through your head when that Blizzard connects? Uh, that was the big question mark for today because it's like when the Blizzard connects, I should should I default to up smash? Should I try to go in for the grab? Is that dependent on like what I see them trying to escape with? Well, let's still, well, okay. So you're hit, you're moving in right now. What do you think yeah. makes sense based on what you see here? My instinct is going to be down smash. That's my icy's instinct. Okay. Let's see what happens. That's the, that's the, and it misses. Right. So what do you think would have worked better here? Up smash. Okay. So you dash jump cancel it and hit over here. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense to me. I would say that like up sm I would say that we're trying to cover as big of a because the blizzard is interrupting a lot of the stuff he's doing. I'm thinking that his he's basically going to be jumping or air dodging out of a lot of things. So I want something big that covers a big area. Mm -hmm. Like my wish my wish list is very small. It's like big enough big enough to cover what his get out like big enough to cover out to cover how he leaves the situation. Um and yeah, that hits the relevant space. So I'm thinking like up air. I'm thinking forward air. I'm thinking up smash. Anything, any, anything in that kind of family. Yeah. Because the other thing here is that like even let's say like we get one of those moves, they probably will generally lead to better reward than down smash anyway, right? Yeah. So like I just don't see what the down smash is giving us. <clears throat> Not much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good down, good like that down smash is good, but like that that's because we you know we can that was a different situation, combat we happened to catch his movement or like his commitment like that all makes sense, mm -hmm. but yeah if we were if we already got him pinned by something I think it makes a lot more sense for us to just kind of focus more on how do we 
like, if we've got him pinned by Blizzard, we want to capitalize on how he gets out of Blizzard, and it's not really by, like, going to the ground. Mm -hmm. It's by DI'ing up and then air dodging or up being, or, like, just something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So talk to me about, like, what we get out, about what the plan is after these, um... After those, um, F smashes... Oh, I see. Um, so we're just trying to, like, we're just trying to, like, cover that zone. Yeah, I'm just trying to harass him a bit with the ice blocks. Cool. So could we? Would it have been? Would it have made more sense to just shoot them? Shoot the grounded ones here because I feel like the extra time cost us. Uh, perhaps. I I wanted to kind of like get them on the ground. I want I wanted them to not be on the platform and just go straight to ledge. Because I felt that would have given him less time to react. But you're right. Maybe just immediately afterwards would have been a little bit better. Yeah, because you see what I mean? Like, the extra time, like, it winds up, it kind of gives him, like, something to work with. The other thing we might want to consider is, can we just, is it better for us to just wave dash over and, like, guard with our, guard with our, like, attacks? Oh, uh, given that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure that would be faster. Well, so I'm thinking we can wave dash off the platform and say, like, fall, fast fall to the grab edge, right? Um... Maybe, but if he saw that I would wave dash forward, he would just simply fast fall the ledge there, not double jump. So if we turn our, if we turn around after the F smash, like we hit this, we hit this, we like immediately yeah. turn around, we wave dash back and fast fall. You don't think mm -hmm. we can, we we don't you don't think we get to the edge first? No, I don't okay. I don't think so. Okay, cool. So it's, then that's like the, the icy's fall speed is particularly bad. Okay, so even with fast fall, you don't think we get there. Not against his fast fall. Okay, fair enough. Then that's all I need to know. Interesting. That so, was an attempt at my old trick. Okay. So is there is there a reason we're not just like so is there a reason we're not doing like the down throw reverse down air thing like the just hit them behind because I feel like that's gonna give us like is that gonna is that worse at giving us the, the smash attack if we're just planning on putting be him behind us anyway? I have never gotten it to go behind. Really? I've I've legitimately spent time this week and past week practicing the down throw down air because it was something I saw at the bracket, but I have never gotten it to give to give that reverse hit. Gotcha. Okay. It's goofy. Especially given how slow the down throw is on Falcon in comparison. Hmm. Okay, cool. So that's just kind of a... That might be a... That's a... Might need to look at how we do that combo kind of thing. Yeah. I think you have to have, like, Nana like dash jump forward or something, possibly. Perhaps. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Um... Yeah. I guess for me, I'm just more like interest. So for this one, do you think actually this is a good this is a good moment? So you get this. Do you think you could have beaten him to the edge here? Yes. Okay. So that was just a fast fall, right? Yeah. Okay. Get up here. I think we need more. I think that like the short. I think that short up up airs are really something that would have made a big difference here. Yeah. So like here's here's like from this point like, or rather when you respawn, it's really from the the point where you respawn onward. So like, I want you to like take a look at some of these. So he's going like this, this right, this full hop up here, here, right? Mm -hmm. 
So you're basically trying to cover him, like going to this, you no, know, this kind of space, right? Yeah. So yeah, but what I what I would get at, what I would point out is that like, we kind of get the same impact by like doing the short hop one anyway. Um, the next thing that happens here is we wave dash forward into these jabs, but I kind of think that like, I kind of think that we're you know with where he's positioning himself. I know we can't get it here. Mm -hmm. But I kind of think, but I feel like with how much he's going into this this area up here, this mm -hmm. should be a cue that we should be like sh no short hopping up here in these kinds of spots. Like instead of going for these jabs here, I feel like this is absolutely the type of thing we need to be guarding against. Okay. Like we go for it here, but then we like we do the we do the um L we don't do get the auto cancel. So then that kind of causes us to be open for like a lot longer. That's kind of one of the benefits of it. The fact that it like ends so quickly and then transitions mm -hmm. into shield or other actions. That's like one of the big perks of it. I think that here we can also see spots where like it would have been quite good. Like this is like you still managed to get the defense, but like imagine if you didn't have to go all the way up here after mm -hmm. like doing your your attack. Like instead of just if we, if we just covered this space here with short hop up here, mm -hmm. like I don't think we get, I don't think we ever get punished like for going for this. I still I still think you might have been able to shield that though, maybe. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So this could also be a, an an op like a, a spot where we just shield instead. Mm -hmm. um, to prevent the damage, but... I imagine that were your, hand, do, were your hands tense during this game, or like, were you feeling nervous, or...? Um... This was September 8th, right after the... the bracket, so my hands were probably fairly loose, but also like... still winding down. Okay. Yeah, the biggest things that with Blizzard, I think, is that we're just covering spots that weren't that the opponent's not likely to be in. Like when when the mm -hmm. Blizzard connects. Like let's it was on this first interaction. So like we go for a down smash here, but you'll notice like if you look at the spot he occupies, right? It's kind mm -hmm. of off the ground and like he's trying to DI upwards to avoid your grab, right? Yeah. So with that in mind, like what are the things that he can do out of like I think the big thing with Blizzard is to remember what are the things people can do out of it? Um let's DI and jump. Yeah, exactly. What what other things can they do though? Like uh, not just jump and smash DI because they're going to they will do anything they can possibly do. Like it's common for jumps to get eaten in this position, but people don't really just fall to the ground versus climbers here. They will do anything they possibly can to get to avoid like landing. So what's something else that they might do? Um, I could see I see perhaps a Marth counter come out. Yeah, Marth counter would make sense. If what what's what about uh what's something more universal? More universal than jump out of I don't know. Air dodge. Oh, air dodge. Okay. I've even seen people up B here. Like I Really? Mean, yeah. Cuz like <laughs> again, their whole thing is they just don't like where does your grab hit? Your grab hits probably in like a small area around here. Yeah. Right. So like the, the one thing that they want to do more than anything else, like this is lava to them. Like this is absolutely, they do not want to be here above all else because they, they understand that this is where they die. So with that in mind, they will be willing to like move this way, this way, this way, in any way they possibly can mm -hmm. to get away from you. So if they don't have their double, obviously double jump is their best way of like doing so. But if they don't have this, these become the next be two best ways of doing it, right? Because these yeah. just like are universal things they can all do. If they have mm -hmm. a, if they have a special that happens to help them, like Fox's Shine, even like even Fox's Shine and Falco's Shine, I don't think they're gonna do them here, because they're just gonna reflect it, get stuck in lag for like an hour, and then mm -hmm. we just we take like three damage and then we kill them. So yeah. I think that like they're like if, if from a space and even from a space animals perspective with their like myriad of good things like they're still probably interested in doing one of these two if this isn't available mm -hmm. so i would say that like with that in mind the best things that ICs can do are absolutely things like up smash um and up air because it just happens to cover like icy short hop up air covering this like this kind of zone like that's mm -hmm. just that's just so money 
Mm -hmm. So up air, up smash. Like these are the things that we want to be looking for. I also mm -hmm. like fair here. I also like fair here just because it kind of like hits like this, like this kind of trajectory, mm -hmm. um, like this kind of area. Um, it is kind of slow though, so you know if the yeah. opponent has like faster options, maybe don't do it. But against Falcon, I quite like it because he's just kind of bad off tech anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So after Blizzard, this is kind of what I would gravitate towards. If you see okay. them, if you see they happen to fall into like the kill box, like down here, then mm -hmm. you can grab. But like as you can see, they're trying like desperately to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. Dash attack isn't bad either. Yeah, it scoops up. Yeah. And it hits kind of like in this area, like it's not quite as good, but dash attack is worth considering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have another do you have another VOD versus Falcon we can look at? Uh no, I wanna hop into that down throw dare, because that it annoys me. Okay, cool. So, let's talk down through dare. Do you want to like do, do you want to do this like practice do you want to try this um in a practical setting like uncle Pun like do you want to load up uncle punch and maybe we can like tinker with it or what are your yes. thoughts? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, I'll let you do that and then share your screen. Perfect. Um no smash just like just for practice's sake. Um no smash DI. It should no be trajectory. like well, for let's do, yeah, so for your trajectory DI will do none. And then, like, let's try to give this a whirl. Let's also use Captain... Oh, uh, yeah, actually, no, we'll use Fox for this. We'll use Fox for this. And then general input display. Okay. Yeah. And then let me just turn... Okay. So usually how I've been practicing is I just grab, and then I short hop with Nana, like that. Okay, so to hit him, get him behind you, try, like, dash... Short, try doing a dash jump with her into, mm -hmm. full, into full hop down here, because I feel like that's usually what I see people do. So like I think Dash. it's pummel that no pummel down throw and then like yeah kind of like that except you have her go f forward more. So so that's a, so it's a full hop one as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think it's, there's there there there's the um, oh sorry God Nana um. There's the popo force that pulls her back in, so I'm just. I wonder if there's a video out there on this. Give me a second. I'm wondering if Wobbles made something a long time ago. I think it might be awkward on Fox because, like, his, like he's he's down thrown so quickly. Because I know Captain Falcon is much much uh, slower in terms of the down throw animation. Yes, let me see here. Down through reverse their eyes clamors. Okay, um I think I'm it, it I think it is something that's unique to Falcon. Cause if I full hop it, it gets the turnaround. Cool. Let's turn. Let's put him. Let's put some um, di on him though to just like to just see like what happens. Let's have him di away. Okay. Um. Trajectory di. Outwards. outwards. He still goes behind. Toggle his percent up to like say like thirty. Okay. And let's just give it a whirl. Nope. So it's, oh, okay. We had, we had to I, save it there. That's yeah. Okay. I hate how it uses a D-pad for saving. I think it's that. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Falcon ends up behind. Okay. So it's something that's Falcon unique. That's why. Because I was mostly practicing my down throw dares on Fox and then adjusting my timings for other characters. Try it on another big character. Try it on Marth. I think it's more of like just the size of the character when they come out of it. And when they come out of it. So... I'm trying to, like, I'm, I want to see, like, what it looks like on another humanoid. Okay. Okay, I'm going to save this, save this, okay. Um...
Oh, you didn't. So it's definitely not the dash forward thing. Um. Maybe it's like I... you, maybe she has to jump forward while none, well, like while Popo's throwing. Yeah, I think that's it. Because like if I just have her jump, he will go forward. Mm -hmm. es especially if it, especially if it's a full hop. But I'm not sure I would ever do like a f like a full hop. Um. Oop. Yeah, I'm not sure I would ever just do a straight full hop down there. If I'm, I would want him to go ahead. I would probably just do the short hop version. Yeah, because it's if like, I, it's uh, what's the advantage of the short hop version? It's a lot less escapable. You have to SDI more. Okay. Because like, because like, if I because it, it's it, it's the time of the th it's because like, it's the time from when they get the um they're out of the throw is a lot shorter. And they're a lot wow. closer to the ground because if I full hop, like there's a lot of room there for Marth to do stuff. But if I just short hop it, he's a lot closer to the ground. Hmm. Okay. I that might not be the exact reasoning, but I know there is a reasoning for it. I wonder, like, if like so. I think you're going a little too fast on Popo's action afterwards. Okay. This looks a lot. This looks good. Yeah. Um, and then to reverse, I want to go forward. I want to full hop with Dana and then go forward. Okay. Oh. Okay. So yeah, this this I can see being useful on like on like any of the humans because like it looks like it it looks like it has to do with like when the down air hits them, which is more mm. dependent on how tall they are. Try it on Peach. Okay. <clears throat> And we can just have like random DI because it seems to be like working. It seems to be working. We'll just turn smash DI off though. Yeah. Smash DI off, but like random DI to see if it's consistent. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's a slight different. Okay, so it works on her. It looks it, like it's more strict. It might just be more percent related because I don't think she's. Let's set her like twenty. Yeah. Cause like she's not she she's not spending enough time in the air. Yeah, if when she's at zero versus when she's at like fifteen or twenty or so. I'm gonna record this. Okay. Yep. Nope. <laughs> you got the, you got the perfect meteor too. Yeah, it's just that like when the, when the characters are th like when on fast characters I tend to use uh, Z, but on slower characters I just prefer to go to the C stick. Mm, okay. But yeah, she needs each needs a little percent on her. So she needs to spend a little more time in the air. And you, I think that we can, like, I think we can see that this is, like, this is a pretty big utility here. Yeah. Like, being able to put them behind us, for, like, when we're going for the comp, when we're going for, like, those kill setups. Because the other thing here is that, like, you're trying to, like, you're trying to hit the Falcon behind you with down throw forwards, like, with, like, a forward smash, basically, to hit him the right way. I think if you try, like, is even if this Peach smashed you guys, it's probably really easy to get, like, mm. her behind you, but then still get the forward, to, but still get the F smash. Oh, I didn't set a direction, so let's have her smash DI away. Let's see what that does. Okay, so if she smashed the eyes away, it looks like she stays uber close to the ground. Makes sense. Okay. And then smash DI towards. <laughs> okay. So smash DI towards. If I'm getting trying to get the turnaround on her, smash DI towards is the rough one. But if, I'm, but if I'm just trying to get her to go forward, just the, sh the, the, the short hop one, but delayed. Uh, set it back to away. Okay, now there. Whoop. Yeah, there's where she gets out. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so Peach needs a bit of percent. Um, yeah, because I was not seeing that on, on the space animals. Like, if I put it back on Fox, now with what I know, um... Well, it's also worth noting that your down throw, your down throw is weight dependent, right? So it's going to be faster on Fox than it is on the others. So we yeah. might just have to have Nana like full hop forward like sooner. Be like, how much sooner, and is that even possible sooner? Yeah, I don't know. Because like, there's because because there there's the Popo Force. Yeah. We might even have to like hold. We might even have to begin like holding forward while we're doing like the second that Popo starts like his down throw. The situation is a lot less dire on space animals because there's also there's other ways to turn around. Yeah, I mean like you have down you have the reverse dash attack stuff on them as well. Like you've got enough you've got enough things to do work with that it's not really needed. This is this is my preferred one. Just wave dash back and re grab. Oh, yeah, that seems good. Yeah, so yeah, we have other ways of we have other ways of setting up lethal on them. Yeah. But on the this other, one on, for, on the humanoids one, it makes a lot of sense though, I think. Yeah. Also, uh something particularly interesting from the tournament is you can't hand off Pichu. Really? You cannot no. He goes he he, he he goes too far out. You physically cannot hand off Pichu the the classical way. Um Pichu is unhand offable by the ice climbers. Cuz like Nana has to be forward a bit. Oh, I see. If, so you can do so you, so you can't like you can do it but it's like for a very a much more like shorter oh i see so here do you, do you see do you see yeah um no because 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 i have him smash diing and trajectory diing if he just doesn't do anything he's out of position gotcha. he moves really far out it's also this he looks like he's going super fast could you like I'm trying to think this, here. this well i'm doing the puff timing and he shares a weight class with puff Gotcha. So he just goes like super far because of his weird character properties and stuff. Yeah. The recommendation is forward throw, but if Nana immediately throws, you're not getting that regrab. Can don't you just have like a natural down throw chain grab on him until like thirty or something and then I need to check the spreadsheet. You may. Either way it's just like because it's like like you need to have Nana forwards a bit, so I think it's probably pummel dash, oh, pummel, whatever. It's just he's an annoying character when it comes I mean, to the grab yes. combos. I mean, yes, but like it's, it's also Pichu. Pichu. <laughs> like he's a I glass think, cannon. Yeah, I think we'll survive. I think we'll survive not being able to infinite like you know a bottom six yeah. character. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see. Um, right. First one is one. The last one I want to check is Sheik. He's the last of the humanoids. Mm -hmm. No smash DI, no trajectory DI, and then no grab escape. Okay. Oh, intro. Oh. I'm not too worried because there is the free chain grab, but yeah, doesn't she look, look like. She looks okay. a little weird. If I have Nana super out there because of like uh, because of a dash grab, I think I can get it to work. But normally it does not seem like it. No. So this is just the type of thing that we'll have to like kind of live. With. So there's certain things that we might have to live with unless we find new technology or something. But I yeah, think that's so like Marth and Falcon. Yeah, Marth and, and Marth and Falcon and Peach. I mean, like those are three characters that are important to kill anyway. So okay, far from the end um, of the world. Yeah. Um, primarily with Falcon, it seems very, very easy. Marth, it's lenient. Uh, Peach is a lot more rough. Yeah, Peach is a little um, tricky. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Last think... thing, uh, last thing I just want to touch on is Ness. Okay. This annoying little guy. <laughs> so, sure. what? Yeah, he's, uh, he, I think he's fine versus climbers personally. So, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Um, uh, what do you want to know we... about him? Um, what am I supposed to do against like um, run off a plat, double jump down air? Like, 
this. Attack him. Just up air into him. Assume he's at, like, close to 0%. Up air into him. Really? Yeah, just full hop up air, falling up air. Like, just keep doing, like, just push button. Okay. No, seriously, like, so have him, like, here, record, like, record him doing something. Um, okay. or just have him, actually, honestly, just have him jump on the platform. Like, set him to, like, put him on the platform there. Yeah, exactly. And then just take him out of, like, record. Like, you just, instead of CPU mode, just go to, like, off. And then just have him, like, up on the platform, just have him jump. Like, in the CPU general options. Just put him there, yep. And then just up air into, like, f full hop up air, falling up air kind of thing. Or the full okay. hop up here, like up, up, up smash after, like just yeah, yeah. So like, what I want you, what I want. So from here, just go into him. So you're double jumping the up air. Now try to go forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, try to have him near out of it at the end. So said for it, his like attack for his um CPU option. Um, yeah, counteraction near. Yep. Oh, he, he moves super far. Okay. Oh. So you see, like, you can just kind of, like, even if he moves, like, it's not the end of the it's not the end of the world. Try to grab him after, honestly, like, when you land. What happened? Oh, he, he must have gotten out of jump? Oh, no. Weird. Okay. Hey, Ness, you want to jump? Just jab him. Maybe it'll, like, fix him. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'll uh, restore that. Why are you always broken? Okay, um, full hop, grab. Oh, no, not if I push off the plat, so I'm going to jab you from the other side. Okay. You see, like, becomes, yeah. But you see, like, see how he doesn't really have a whole lot of ways down? Because the thing is, if you, double, if you just keep wailing on him when he's in that position and he tries to jump, because of his jump being, like, slow to start, you're just going to be able to kind of smother him. So... The idea here is that you're just you're just atta you're just putting pressure on him and forcing him to take a risk with his landing, and yeah, you could also like go for like up air to back air that kind of thing. Um, it's not the best thing ever. It's not the best system, but you also don't need the best thing ever because it's Ness. Like he doesn't really have a whole lot of counterplay that's like threatening from this position, um, and the instant like and you want to come in from below because that's where he doesn't have any move. That's where he doesn't have any moves. Okay. Um, once you get him, once you start knocking him away from with this kind of setup, then he's kind of he's kind of screwed. Um, he'll try to like come in with like he'll either try to come go around you or try to come in with like good angles, but those are both beatable. So yeah, yeah. Like the okay. biggest thing is is just don't play in his fair zone. What is what is his fair zone? Would you say? Uh, just like make a diag, like just like, just like here. So go into like this. The yeah, exactly. Don't play in that spot. Try to get underneath that line. Okay. Or block. His fair is like very unsafe on shield. So if you block it, he's like negative five. So just block and shield grab it. Really? Okay. Yeah. If you try to challenge it head on, you're going to find yourself very unhappy. What he does a lot of the time is he'll mix up his fair with his down air, but mm -hmm. just try to keep an like try to keep an eye out for like you'll notice that there's a pocket of space that's underneath him with either of those options, like kind of like the triangle below and in front of him. So yeah, like his his underside is like all is generally just kept open. Oh, I didn't press that. Okay. Um. Yeah, here. Yep, exactly. Okay. That makes sense. Alrighty. Because, yeah, you can see that, like, it's just... It's kind of... It's very similar to how Sheik operates. If you want to think of it that way. So you know how, like, Sheik has kind of like a... There's kind of like a triangle that she makes when she comes off the platform with her needle and her, like, fair and yes. stuff? 
same idea here, you get underneath it. Yeah. We have a diagram of that in the IC's Discord for a reason. It's Makes a very, sense. very poorly made diagram. Let me see if I can actually get it open. Um, here it is. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> what? This is like very bully with up air zone, super AC fair death zone. Okay, I the only thing I comment there is that like you say it's a super AC fair death zone, but if you just short up up air underneath that area, like moving across it, like you're fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it is what it is. But Silk Road, Silk Road is like Silk Road goes hard. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I do have somebody else at like six. So I do have to go. Yeah. But for takeaways, the biggest thing I the biggest thing with you is just. Continue to develop the short up, no, the shack up airs. I would also strongly, strongly urge you to um, just get used to using dash attack, short up, up air, and up smash out of the um, out of blizzard the blizzard. Wall. And um, yeah, otherwise, I think that you've and yeah, like find more ways to put people behind you when you're doing your down throw stuff. But I think yeah. that otherwise, that this is all all of this makes sense in terms of a direction. Okay. All right, I'll yep. leave you to it, and we'll talk soon. Yep. Have a good one. Thank you.